Welcome all of you back to Trends here on the Inner Sanctum YouTube channel. If you are new around here, do me a solid. Flick that like button, flick the subscribe button. Make sure you're a part of a wonderful community where we've got independent journalists here covering a wide range of sports. So look after everyone. Today on this episode of Trends, we're talking about Port Adelaide and are they a smoky? For the flag. So let's run the intro and let's get stuck into it. Let's slide right by that energy. Even when you feel low, you can still go. Even when you feel slow, you can still go. Even when there's no hope, you can still go. I never ran to no man, I still go. Go, 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 go. Let's look at Port Adelaide, currently second on the ladder and absolutely humming. At the moment, it has to be said. They have been playing some divine football of late with 10 winnings and two losses and are on a big streak after a very comprehensive performance versus Hawthorne. But in between there, they've beaten they beat Richmond at the G, they've beaten Melbourne, they've beaten North Melbourne, and they've beaten Essendon, who at themselves at the time were playing good football. And with an eighth oldest side and a ninth experienced side and we had them at sixth at the start of the year they have really probably surpassed expectation at this stage and they're playing a really solid brand of football one thing is really for certain with Ken Hinckley's side is he has a great knowledge of what his side is capable of about he seems to be the most talked about coach I think in the AFL and we did a video on him early when we talked about Luke Beveridge it seems to be either it always seems to be Ken Hinckley who is rumoured about being sacked but He's got them playing a very specific brand of football, which, when you look in today's AFL, is logical. And if you actually look at them, we've colour graded these for below average, average, and elite. Disposals and disposal efficiency hanging in the bottom echelon of there. They're not a side that accumulates a lot of football. However, if you look at the meters per disposal, they are the third largest distance covered side per touch with the eighth metres gained. And that is really important when you start to give an Ostend, because if you look to disposals and metres gained, you wouldn't really think of anything. But they're a very heavy territory-based side. And if you look at the other numbers, you understand why. What you see Port do really at the moment really well is when they wrestle that ball back. And it's interesting to know in the last five rounds, they have been the highest pressure rated side in the AFL is they work with manic pressure and they get the ball going forward. They know their system. They know their skill set. And more importantly, they have a good understanding of what is in the Arsenal at Port Adelaide. And they're a fearsome, really, proposition. When you look this year, Todd Marshall, Finlayson, they've had to carry the workload with Charlie Dixon being out but they rely on them small players and their ability to score goals in clusters from all around the ground. And if we look at this stat here, we talked about pressure acts, currently sixth in the AFL, but these tackles here, once that ball goes inside 50 and around the ground, they're working very hard and they ain't shy of the ground ball game. And these numbers are telling you here that they're a tough side. They're a physical side. They're happy to do the rough stuff. They're happy to make it difficult. And that's one thing that is a staple of Port Adelaide this year. There's been a few games where this has switched off and you've seen them get comprehensively beaten. But in the recent weeks, they've got a real galvanised unit at Port Adelaide. They're real physical. They're tough to beat. They're tough to break down. They don't give away easy touches. They make you be an honest football side when you play them. And that is really testament to the brand that Port play. It's a very condensed system. It doesn't allow a lot of space around the grounds. And ultimately, what they do is they make it hard for you. And they stay in games for longer. And that is a key point with Hinkley. Last week against Hawks, Hawks fired at times. But they make it hard. They don't make it easy. And they take away the space. They make you kick into them risky areas and one staple is when they kick it out from their own kick-ins they look for switches very late in the piece most sides look for the switch early on they're quite happy to go kick kick big switch 
and then they're out. And once they're out, they're running in clusters and running in numbers. These ones are really interesting, right? The rebound 50 rate is the amount of inside 50s that turn into a rebound 50. Rank very low. They rank very low in the intercept marks. But one thing here is high is the spoils and score launches. And this is a testament, again, to how they play. Transition is a huge part of AFL. And it's probably one of the more important stats. But when you've got players like Lockie Jones, Dan Houston, Burton, Bonner, players like that, Darcy Byrne Jones, when he swings back, they're looking to use the ball in handball chains and get the ball moving forward. And that is what you see. Their ability to hit you from that back half of the ground is a real testament to how they play. And that's why them high spoils are there. They're looking to bring it down to play to their smallers. They're not the tallest side. So Hinkley knows that, and he plays to their strength, their ability to run in clusters, their ability to create options, their ability to score launch is impressive from the back half of the ground, but their ability to score launch from your stoppages and your clearances, particularly in the back half of the ground, is real testament to how Hinkley plays a real offensive game plan. It's not a defensive game plan by any stretch of the imagination. He creates them options around the ground by the way that the players are. Looking here, though, this is where they're deadly. We talked about the tackles inside 50 and their heavy pressure. Their conversion isn't great, but this is really important to note. They are the number one, the, one of the number one side. They are the number one side at the amount of goal scorers they've had this year. An absolute cluster. They're second in the average goal scorers per game. Melbourne are the best side at this, but their ability to have different avenues to go and hurt you, particularly from goals in midfield, shows about that run and stun system, particularly in the midfield. Shots from inside 50s, chance creation, that basically is. How many shots at goal do they make? They're second in the league. Their conversion is low, though, but them inside 50s genuinely turn it into a goal either through a turnover, through forward half pressure, which they're ranked as one of the best sides of the comp. And that is the system. It's get it in there, ball hits the deck, attack. Down back, ball comes in, knock it to ground, make it difficult, wrestle the ball back. They are masters in this and they're a real fearsome side. So the question being said, we've looked at the analytics. Can Port win this flag? Why not? Why not? This is, we've, we were deprived and round 19 is going to be the game that we all need to turn our eyes on. But we've been deprived of these two matching up when they're in form. Port keep this form up. You look, they've got the doggies who themselves are susceptible to pressure. Geelong. Then they've got the bye. Away to Essendon. Gold Coast. Carlton. Away. Collingwood. Melbourne. Um, Adelaide. Geelong. Away. GWS. Fremantle. Away. And Richmond. Fairly likely there that that will lock them into finals. They they will easily get enough wins from there. Um, they're going to start favourites for probably over half of them games. What is really interesting here is this system, though, because it's manic pressure-based, because it's hard, because it's chaos almost, for a want of a better word. This kind of says to me here that they are going to run into finals, but home finals could be key for them because that manic pressure, that ability to make it tough and make it difficult could see them be a real good side in a finals conducive system. It is a really exciting time at Port and if they can keep it, I feel like there's something building at Port Adelaide that no side in Melbourne wants to play them because even coming away, bringing 10, 15,000 Adelaide fans over, Port Adelaide fans, it could be a really killer game and really good for the game. I'm looking forward to seeing where this goes. But so far, what we know for fact, Port Adelaide are playing a brand that genuinely goes deep into finals. But more importantly, they're playing as a side that has something to prove and a real watch for me. Stay tuned for more content here on the Inner Sanctum channel. Look after yourselves. And until next time, trends out.